Are we recording? Okay. Yep. So good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Atsuko Horiguchi, and I've been asked by the mayor to chair this uh, newly formed Equity and Inclusion Committee at the town of Somerset, which I'm very honored and humbled by. And I'm so pleased to meet all of you, um, finally, um, almost in person. Some of you I've met through Zoom. Some of you I've uh, communicated by email, but um, and some of you I know because Robin lives two doors down. <laughs> um, but uh, I thought we'd take um, a few minutes to introduce ourselves. Um, I don't think that we all know each other. Uh, maybe start by where we live, how long we've been a Somerset resident, anything professional, personal that um, you'd like people to know about yourself. Um, not a whole CV or bio, um, so maybe one minute a person, if um, that suits. And um, Robin Barr here is a town council member who is our liaison. And I believe it was Robin who recommended and had this committee created by the town. So I'm gonna um, actually first turn the virtual floor over to Robin to introduce the committee as a concept. All right. All right. Um, anyway, good evening, everybody. And first of all, thank you very much for agreeing to be part of the committee and, and to ASCO especially for agreeing to chair it, which is tremendous. Um, the, the, I mentioned why I did develop the committee to ASCO um, when she was, first of all, talking to me about it. And it was partly because of what was happening nationally last year um, with the Black Lives Matter protests around George Floyd's death and other um, actions, but also locally. Um, and we had incidents both in our broader community and actually in town uh, that, that brought up sensitivity, cultural sensitivity, racial sensitivity. And it suggested that we should, to me anyway, that we really should begin to think about ways to improve that locally here in Somerset, as well as broad, in our broader community, including Montgomery County. And that was the origin of developing the, this committee idea. Uh, we're not alone in it. Um, I, I will say the town of Chevy Chase has what is there. They've got a racial justice committee. And actually, they ran an event just yesterday that I was able to attend. So but anyway, that 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 was the idea behind the committee. Um, the the mission statement is really long, uh, but it can be broken down into three simple parts. One is, um, one fo focus is around the town's governance, business processes, call it what you like, which is to do with, can we improve our rules um, and our procedures that will benefit a broader, more diverse community? That's, that's, that's the guts of it. Um, one of the points, of the, I was at the communications committee last week, and one of the things that they asked Matt was, uh, do we have any mention in our review guidelines when we do uh, a request for proposals, you know, for a contract for the, with, with, you know, that will consider the uh, background of the applicants, are there minority applicants, you know, are they underrepresented applicants? No, there is nothing like that in our review criteria. So that, you know, that's just one of the areas that, that, that to think about. There are other areas in our business processes and I don't want to stop your ideas. Uh, the, the second theme is history. Um, and what is our town's history? Why have we come to be the town we are? Um, which is not very diverse, frankly. Um, and, and was that by accident or was there something more to it? Um, what one issue that the committee might want to get into here is um, a back and forth on why we have a lot of Jewish families in town, because uh, we do. And the what I was told when I joined, and I was 20, I'm a 25 year resident when I came in was, well, we were just more liberal toward the town always was more liberal towards Jews. And so what happened was Jewish people moved in and then other people saw it was a good community for Jewish people. And so the numbers increased over time. Oh, that, that, that's, that's good. But as I realized later on that that's possibly not the only reason why we have a strong Jewish community and the town of Chevy Chase doesn't and Chevy Chase Village doesn't. And that is to fight the fact that we've got a new Somerset. Um, we have um, the majority of town is built 
post-World War II. And in fact, attitudes changed post-World War II to pe Jewish people, particularly because of the awfulness of World War II, uh, which then very much changed attitudes in housing. And so it may be that we have many more Jewish families in town because a lot of the town was built after World War II. But we don't know the answer to that. I mean, literally, that has not been researched. We do not know the answer to that. Um, and there are other aspects of our history that, that I mean, I, I have possibly a myth on our history that the reason why we are a town uh, was back in the first decade of this century, uh, the uh, council was ruled by farmers. And these new, new, new suburbs. Sorry, Robin. May I interrupt you? Um, this is very interesting, but um, I can you move to the next point because actually, I just wrote you in the chat. But the mayor and I had a conversation about this historical aspect of the mission, and so I want to I want to discuss it very quickly. But um, okay, well, I'll get. I'll move on to the not, next. It point, may then. not be part of our purpose. I don't think it's going to be part of our purpose to deal with the history. Oh. We may learn from it, but there's a history and archive committee now in Somerset. Which I'm so. liaison to, yeah, actually. Um, yeah. No, I, and I think you, you should probably work with them as with other committees, but we'll get on Absolutely. the third side of it anyway, is um, the broader community. And should you participate in, uh, we, the town, participate in actions that the county is doing or broader in the state is doing, or even just our other municipalities are doing, that continue to diversify, that continue to, um, extend uh, the, 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 the range of individuals in town. So the, the, those are the three, and maybe it's two now, I don't know, but um, I certainly hope that some side of history can be uh, looked at in this town because I think there is a real uh, diversity side to our history. All right, I'll stop there. Okay, thank you, Robin. Um, did you wanna mention anything about your interests, career? You said you were a 25-year. Um, well, I, I am yes, 25-year year, um, resident of town. I mean, first of all, there was a whole expose of me done in the town journal just a couple of months ago. So, I mean, if you really want to read about me, you can find all about that in the town journal. Um, I came to the town council after being chair of the environment committee for a number of years, um, and um, had some accomplishments in that committee that I won't go into just now. Um, I'm also on the town's, was on the town's budget committee and I'm a, a liaison to the town's budget committee and we again, the reason why we have a rainy day fund was really Phil Young and myself going, what, digging us out of a hole um, back in 2008, 2009. So those are some of the background. So, all right, that's cool. It's all yours. Okay, thank you, Robin. Um, so I'm Otsko and um, I call myself a recovering banker and bureaucrat. I was with the World Bank Group for 25 years and before that on Wall Street, um, but I've been retired from that world for nine years and I'm a professional uh, strategy facilitator, a leadership coach and consultant. Um, so I'm really excited to be able to combine my personal passion um, of which um, inclusion and um, equity and diversity uh, is one. Uh, with my professional skills. So if I seem to like I just did and interrupt Robin, um, I'm, I'm a facilitator by um, profession. So I like to keep things on track. And if I do interrupt you, it's, uh, it's only to keep us on the, tr on track and um, it's not personal. And I hope you don't take it with disrespect. Um, it's certainly not intended as that. Um, and uh, um, I always welcome feedback from all of you if I'm um, being too task oriented because that's again not my intention. I really want to create a community here in our com committee and I want us to be the change that we want to uh, create in the broader community um, in Somerset and beyond. So um, I want to make sure it's an inclusive um, um, committee that um, values all voices. Um, I have two teenagers um, and live on Essex, two doors down from Robin, uh, and I'm quite new. Uh, we moved into Somerset just in 2019, about four months before lockdown. <laughs> um, but I have been wanting to move into Somerset for like 10 years. So 
it was it was very hard to break down that barrier, but here we are. And, and thrilled. So um, the next person I see on screen is Carrie. Okay, so I am Carrie Gu. I live on Warwick Place. Uh, we moved here about two, two and a half years ago. Um, Jonathan Spalter is my husband. We have four children. And um, we, I, um, I'm very grateful that this town that uh, ha has such interest um, in doing something, um, hopefully ha taking some action so that we can try to um, be a, maybe even be a leader in Montgomery County as we think about the kind of, um, who we want to be and what our values are and how we live into that. And professionally, I work um, in education and I uh, work at kind of the inner, in, in many, in some of my work or a lot of my work, I work at the intersection of housing and school quality. And so know a lot about what it means um, for neighborhoods to really be segregated um, because of the privilege that we enjoy here in Somerset because of our schools and our housing. <laughs> and, um, and so it is fascinating and it's work that I'm very interested in and I'm steeped in all day. Um, professionally, I also serve on another board and uh, I'm the co-chair of the DEI task force of, an, of a school board. And so very, very um, passionate about this as well. So happy to be here. Thank you and welcome, Carrie. Um, Leanne, so do we have two Leannes on the committee? Is that correct, Matt? There's a, Leanne Bester is also a member. Um, I, so we have uh, yourself, Carrie, David, Leanne, Joey, Amalia, Sumi, uh, Janet, Leisner, and Bertie Pachenik. I, I think we're the nine people. Is that Okay, so it was Janet that said she couldn't come. Is that correct? Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Okay, Leanne, over to Hi, I'm Leanne. I live on Cumberland. Um, we also, we've been here about a year and a half. Um, I've got four children. Um, I work in real estate at the moment, but previous to that, I was a social worker. Um, I worked in crisis intervention, and then um, I advocated for people with mental health problems and housing. Um, and then when I came to America, um, I worked with some others might eat some downtown um, with mental illness, homeless, um, and people with addictions. So um, yeah, I've always been part of equality and diversity groups. Um, I've held workshops with women, um, empowerment. And yeah, so very excited to be working with you all and to see what we can bring to the table. Thank you, Leanne, and welcome, David. Yeah, thank you, Atsuko. And uh, I'm so excited to meet and get to know everyone in the group here. Uh, I live on Trent Street, and I have been uh, in town since uh, 2003. Uh, with my wife, uh, Julie Abrams, and formerly our two children, uh, Isabel and Raphael, who are now in their 20s and living elsewhere, but still um, very connected uh, to us and to town. Uh, we were all part of the swim team and uh, really enjoyed those times, but um, that's a while ago now. And so being part of this committee feels like a way to connect for me with uh, other residents who share um, my interests in um, equity and inclusion. And my perspective on that is um, shaped by my uh, careers um, years ago as a professional musician in New York City, playing in Brazilian and Latin bands. And in more recent years, more recent decades, as a clinical psychologist, uh, working in the D.C. Department of Mental Health uh, for some years, and then more recently teaching uh, clinical psychologists in universities and working in um, psychotherapy practice. Um, but, you know, my perspective on, on Somerset is that it's a wonderful place for those of us who are here. 
Um, it is also a place of great um, privilege. And I think investigating how that privilege um, came to be, how it operates, how it um, replicates, and how we as a town and as residents participate in the wider um, society to um, uh, get rid of some of those um, aspects of privilege and oppression that are uh, unearned. It's very uncomfortable for me to talk about, I, I will say that, but um, you know, I look forward to our having time together to get into uh, these issues and see what we can do uh, about them. And I, I just love the fact that this group uh, exists and, and we'll be working together. Thank you, David. Joey. Great. Well, I can say with utter confidence, I am the newest uh, resident of Somerset. I might be actually the newest resident of Somerset, not just on this Zoom, but of anywhere in Somerset. So we bought the house at uh, Warwick and Essex on Warwick uh, in December, and we moved in two months and four days ago. So uh, I live here. We moved from Logan Circle. I've been in, I've been here for uh, about 13 years. So I've got my wife, Lauren, a four-year-old Sam, and a one-year-old Abby. Um, uh, we are thrilled to be here. We're thrilled to live in Somerset. You know, we've we've now you know, made the transition to the suburbs from Logan Circle and for the schools and for the community and for everything that you've all described. I think I'm personally, uh, I should say a little bit myself, I work for Senator Ed Markey. I'm a senior advisor, Senator from Massachusetts. So uh, I am a, I'm a real politico on this call. Um, you know, for me, I think the exciting part about the committee is, you know, I've, we've, this is, how should I put this? You know, I got, I got two, we got two little kids here and we've bought a very expensive house and a very, you know, very well-to-do community. And, you know, we want to provide, um, you know, the best for, for, for Sam and Abby, but at the same time, I think it keys off a lot of what David just said. It's like, you want to have a little bit of grounding here, right? Mm -hmm. There's tremendous privilege all around us. I mean, tremendous privilege. I've never been anywhere where they actually shovel the sidewalks and salt <laughs> the sidewalks. Like that's not normal. I grew up in the north suburbs of Chicago in Island Park, and that is a well-to-do suburb. They do not shovel the sidewalks there. That is weird. <laughs> so this is one of one of many, many examples of the privilege we have. I say it partly jokingly, but it's partly true. There's just tremendous, there's, there is tremendous privilege here. And so I think this is a, uh, you know, partly an opportunity for me to, 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 to meet my neighbors and to learn more about Somerset, but at the same time, you know, how do we, I think I've got great perspective given that I've got two little people in this house, you know, and are going to raise our children in this, in Somerset, you know, how do we, how do we ground them and make them be well-rounded citizens? So, um, I'm pleased to meet all of you. Thank you, Joey. Um, Amalia. Hi, I'm Amalia Levitin. I'm a high schooler. I'm a sophomore at BCC and I live on Trent Street. No kids yet, um, probably not for a long <laughs> time, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I have two younger brothers, Coleman and Isaac, who one is in seventh grade, the other one is in five, is five. Um, what else about me? Don't have a job. Um, I'm involved in some of the stuff at school. Um, I run the No Place for Hate program there, which is through the Anti-Defamation League. Um, and I'm just looking forward to see what we can accomplish and help make our community better with through this. Wonderful. Thank you, Amalia. And you should mention your initiative last summer. Oh, yes, of course. That's what I was missing. I knew I was missing something. Um, last summer, um, with the help of David Sachs, I created the Somerset Talks program probably saw some of my listeners posts about it. Um, yeah, and that definitely did help with my interest in this. Thank you. Uh, last but not least, Lusumi. Hi, everyone. My name is Sumi. Um, we're relatively new to the Somerset community as well. Um, we've rented for about a year on Warwick, and then last summer we purchased a home on Dorset. 
at the top of the hill. So I'm really happy to be a part of the Somerset community. You've probably seen my name on emails because I'm currently managing the um, diversity library, which was really spawned by Naomi Green, my neighbor uh, on Warwick, but she has now since left Somerset. So um, it was nice to get that up and running. Would love your feedback and some collaboration on that front. I am mom to two boys, ages nine and seven. In my former life, I was in financial reporting and finance industry just kind of all around the country. Um, now I teach yoga and mindfulness in DC and in uh, Maryland. So that's been a pretty, pretty interesting pivot. Uh, what else? Just um, a first generation immigrant myself. So, you know, have some vested interests and um, we moved from the West Coast. So that's been a little bit of a culture shock. I think, you know, Chevy Chase is not as diverse as I originally had anticipated, just kind of being from Los Angeles, which is, you know, a hodgepodge and definitely a melting pot. So um, just kind of seeing the differences there and helping my children navigate their lives here. Um, they both attend Sidwell and social justice is a huge part of my older one's curriculum in fourth grade. So he comes home with a lot of questions and ideas and wanting to, um, you know, bring in stories and books, and they always have lots of ideas to share. So that's a very interesting part that I thought would fit nicely into the diversity library as well. Great. Thank you, Sumi. We're going to be talking about that library um, in a bit. Uh, but um, Carrie, do you want to say what you just wrote? Okay, we moved from Berkeley. I oh, I was just saying, I can relate to Sumi. When we moved, when we moved from Berkeley, it was, even though I'd lived in Washington 20 years ago, coming with children and seeing it through their eyes after seeing through their eyes growing up in Berkeley, California, it was a shocker. It, it's, it, it is very, very different for them. Different, yeah. Very segregated, very different for them. Great. Yeah, so Robin and I have exchanged some articles about what's going on in California with the housing crisis. And um, Berkeley is very diverse, but right around the corner in Mill Valley, for instance, you know, which is a very privileged um, neighborhood or Tiburon. I mean, there are all these very wealthy enclaves that are far from diverse. And um, I think what's going on in those communities might touch upon ours because in D.C., I've lived in DC now 30 years um, in different neighborhoods, and I've certainly lived in much more diverse neighborhoods like Adams Morgan. Um, and so, you know, just a zip code away can make a huge difference. And I think it has a lot to do with housing policies and housing prices. And so I think we're going to definitely get into that. But um, so now we're moving into the vision conversation which um, I think some of us have started to talk about, um, but maybe we can do another round robin to talk about like, so I think, you know, I, I actually read Robin's mission statement um, very carefully and I was prepared to sh share Google Docs, but I don't want to, I don't want us to get lost in the uh, minutia of the language. But I think in addition to what Robin, you outlined as your vision is, or rather purpose, for this committee is to look at the governance of the town itself, you know, the way it conducts business, um, how equitable, inclusive, and diverse is um, the governance of the town, the runnings of the town business. Um, I think you also mentioned the celebration of differences and raising awareness and uh, appreciating the differences. And then finally, I think the, the most difficult difficult and potentially controversial part is any policy changes that we might be looking at um, to make our community more, you know, inclusive. Um, so I guess I would love to hear from you what you have in mind. Some of you might, um, like I got the impression um, that maybe uh, some of you have in mind more like awareness raising and cultural events and like understanding uh, black history and so forth. But, um, you know, so I think there's a spectrum of things that we can do and what we can affect. But in your mind, like, and, you know, oh, I meant to say in the very beginning, this is a no judgment zone. 
Um, again, I think we should practice what, you know, the changes we want to see in our community. So all views are welcome. And I just want to get a sense of what committee members are thinking in terms of how far you would like in your dream, in your vision, how far this notion of inclusivity um, and equity should go or you want it to go. Like when you close your eyes and you reflect a dream community, what would that look like vis-a-vis -vis issues of um, equity and inclusion? David. So, so I have a quick question. On my screen, I see a name, Kumar Vaswani, and Kumar Vaswani has not um, been introduced or been given an opportunity to participate. So I was wondering what Kumar, uh, Kumar's presence was about and uh, just curious. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, I assumed. Kumar, are you yes. there? Yes. <laughs> Yes, I assume, I'm but I um, shouldn't have assumed that you are observing because I think this is a public meeting. Where right. I'm actually not on this committee. I'm uh, I'm a resident of Trent Street. Okay, uh, but I grew up in Somerset. Uh, Welcome. I, so I don't know if I have any role to play in this meeting. Just well, you're well. I think Matt, if uh, and Robin, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is an open meeting that yeah, it, it is an open meeting and anybody can participate in the open meeting who's in the town obviously um and um the meetings are public the, the minutes are also public minutes so anybody can read the minutes too yeah I, I would just say um generally the the ma only major distinction between being a committee member versus um you know not a committee member in these settings is just that the committee members have an opportunity to, to vote, to take an action, whereas um, other people can participate, but don't have an official vote. Okay. I'm sorry, um, I guess I misunderstood. I thought non-committee members were observers, but Kumar, did you wanna jump in and introduce yourself? Sure, why not? Um, well, I think you had an introduction from the newest resident of Somerset, and I might be the oldest, although not in age, but in longevity. I grew up in Somerset, and uh, I moved away for college, and then, but I was always in the area, so I've lived off and on in Somerset for the last 50 years, uh, and I just have a long time interest in these issues. Uh, I have a degree in American history, and... Uh, I guess the only thing I wanted to say is I'd sent Robin some suggested uh, changes to the draft charter that he sent out. And I don't know if you had a chance to consider those, Robin, but uh, my hope is that this committee has kind of a broad charter to look at a range of issues. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Kumar. Thank you. Thank you. And um, you just jogged my memory, Kumar, on why I rudely interrupted Robin, which is that there is a pretty long clause in the charter about the history um, and looking into the history of Somerset. And I suggested to the mayor, and maybe this wasn't communicated, and so this is not final, but I made a suggestion that perhaps that was something to be taken up by the History and Archives Committee. Um, with whom we would closely coordinate, of course, and learn from what they dig into. But uh, I think digging into the history uh, could really consume a lot of energy that we, I mean, as I see it, and I, again, I want to hear from everybody, I see this as a forward-looking committee, like what can we do now given history? Um, and we would, of course, want to learn from history, but I don't see that as a primary um, focus, but um, I'd love to go around the room, the virtual room, and hear from all of you, like, what kind of, what is the vision that you have for Somerset? And this can be dreamy, it can be, um, you know, it can be at a spiritual, emotional level. We'll get down to brass tactics later, but today we're going to, you know, talk a little bit about what you long for and dream of. So in any order, but um, 
I can call them people, but I'll, I'll start. I'd love to live in a community that was more diverse where people felt, um, you know, people from different backgrounds, different identities felt welcome and included and they could feel a sense of belonging here. And um, I, I feel like as a town, we could probably take steps, you know, they're not, it's not gonna happen overnight, but there are things that we can do, we can be intentional about, um, and we can be courageous, we can be, we can take some risks if we want to. And they do, you know, ultimately, you know, there are probably some policies that need to be changed. And, you know, I think about that article that was written in The Economist about the social capital of this town and the, the dolphins. And if you think about, um, you know, where kids, you know, get social capital to begin with, it's from, you know, growing up in places like this. And if more children from more diverse backgrounds had those opportunities, um, you know, we'd be a better place. And so how can we, how can we create an environment to, um, to offer those opportunities um, to be inclusive and, and to make sure that more people could take advantage of the social capital or the, um, you know, the community that we have here. And it's not just, it's not just set aside for a privileged few. I, I'd love for us to think about that. And I think there, you know, we can, as a committee, um, we could probably help the town and the other committees and the town council weave this kind of mindset shift, maybe growth mindset into um, how they're thinking about, you know, everything that they do, you know, when it comes to the finance committee and how, you know, the, the decisions that they make or the environment committee and the decisions um, that they make or the, the initiatives that they propose, you know, how can we help um, be part of educating the leaders of the town and the volunteers in the town to think about um, this work and, and incorporate it into what they do. That's my hope and dream. <laughs> Thank you. So this notion of a more diverse community, you know, it touches on economics, right? And the unaffordability, um, of Somerset as it has become. And I think a really interesting debate will be, you know, most of us consider, I think in this town, which I think is highly progressive and liberal in its reputation, when it comes down to it, when it really comes down to it, are people really willing to make changes in our own backyards, you know, so that you know, it could mean schools might become more crowded, the pools might become more crowded. Um, so I think it will, it, it will open up <laughs> a big test of our commitment. You know, we say we want a socially just community and world out there, but are we willing to do what it takes in our own town? Um, any, um, anybody, please speak up. David, Leanne? Yeah, I mean, I think the same as Carrie. It's, um, it's a great community and it's very white privilege and it would, be, it would be great to be more diverse. I think what I think is how, what can we, that would be the big picture, but how can we take small steps to get there in the first place? I think um, we joke that um, my husband and, our, the, and friends that live in Chevy Chase that we live in the Chibubble and you know it's and the more you live here and especially during COVID when you go outside it just becomes more apparent that that you know the real that's real life um, sometimes we volunteer um, with an organization delivering um, groceries to elderly in 16th Street Heights and it's just you know you the you sort of cross go down military and cross over Rock Creek Park and it's a different world and 
we're we're traveling that way less and less and it's how to, how do we make small changes that our children see diversity and real life you know how how do we get there by by making small changes to get to that big change eventually one day hopefully yeah David? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, thank you, uh, Leanne. And, and I um, have definitely felt, um, you know, what I'm getting in part from what you're saying is, you know, raising our children in such a way that they have an awareness of the privilege that they have and have a, a realistic view of the world and hopefully um, participation in it as adults. And um, be happy to share at some point, you know, what we've tried to do with our kids and what feels like it was successful and maybe what wasn't. But um, I kind of wanted to go back to something Atsuko was also talking about, which was um, really sharing some of the privileges and advantages and resources, especially with the housing. And so the um, the, ar the article in the, the, the town journal last month, or I guess it's for the February issue about uh, Will Jawando's um, zoning proposal, which might affect Somerset because Somerset is within one mile of a metro that would allow the missing middle housing to be um, able to be constructed uh, within Somerset, I feel is the kind of issue that really warrants um, serious conversation here, because that is what, you know, really would amount to sharing our um, privileged space within walking distance of a metro with uh, different people, perhaps of a different income uh, uh, bracket. And so I, I, I found that proposal appealing at that uh, level. And I think that's the kind of thing that uh, that, that we should be talking about. Thank you, David. Sumi, you have yourself unmuted. Oh, yes. Um, just kind of, I'm, I'm hearing a lot, you know, echoing many members here, but just kind of focusing on the little people because I have two of them and this is my primary focus um, is, you know, helping them both see mirrors of themselves in the community and also, you know, windows into other people's lives. So I think that's, that's really important for me as a mother to be able to show them, you know, different cultures. And I feel like they're not, you know, they question why there aren't other members of Asian, you know, the Asian community within Somerset and then, you know, African-American community. So these are all just questions that they've come to me um, with. And I, I think kind of in the struggle of teaching them and explaining to them how, you know, certain communities are less diverse. And then of course, with everything that's happening in our bigger community with the Black Lives Matter movement, um, and now more recently with the anti-Asian um, type of uh, sentiment that's been going around. And we actually faced a few. And since this is why we're here, I'll talk about it a little bit, but in Chevy Chase, um, you know, just someone had their window rolled down and my husband is Chinese, I'm Korean. And she looked into the window and she said, you guys need to go back where you came from. And, you know, the windows were rolled down, my two children, the shock on their face, because they had never heard anything like that. It just, it just brought it home. Um, you know, not just that, but, you know, hearing stories of people and members of our community. So it's just kind of a heartfelt effort at this point, I think, just to bring a little bit more diversity and awareness and just be out there instead of, you know, not saying anything about it. Yeah, um, I can tell many stories, but I won't, yeah, I, I hear you. Um, so Sumi, in your mind, um, so there's the awareness, right? There's the explicitly expressed mm -hmm. um, prejudice all the way down to implicit bias. And um, we all have biases that we're not even aware of. And um, 
in the school that my daughter goes to, which is how I know Carrie, because her daughter also goes to um, at the National Cathedral School. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a recent training on implicit bias, which was really powerful. And I think that in itself is, um, you know, a wake up call to a lot of people. So that that I feel like is the awareness part, right? All the way out to opening up um, multifamily, multi-unit housing, which is a whole other, um, you know, um, level of uh, change. I mean, they're both significant changes. Um, but what what do you think you would like to see in Somerset? I, you know, I think this is why the diversity library became, you know, something that, that really spoke to me because I think with kids, you know, re reading Ibram Kendi's book, the whole idea that, you know, children don't see color until I think it's like age three and, you know, then they start to notice like differences between you and I and all of that. Um, and just being, taking a more, uh, like a curiosity sort of mindset versus like a, you're different from me or being fearful of things that make us different, I think is key. So really the element of listening to other people's stories and being able to be comfortable enough to share your own story is really powerful. And so I think that's why the focal point for me in, in researching all the diversity related books, my, uh, my focal point is more on the elementary middle school kind of age group where there is so much content, not that adults are not important. And there's great books out there, like a Valerie Carr's book, See No Stranger is phenomenal, um, you know, tackling both religious issues and as well as cultural um, type of, like you said, implicit, explicit type of um, type of issues that are that are occurring in our in our society today. So I think the big point for me is as much as we can bring curiosity to the table for kids and have them read um, and have families have these discussions a bit more openly um, and maybe as a community, because, you know, the mayor even suggested having the live the diversity library during the summer months, it could be kind of like a read aloud or a book club. Um, for younger children. And I know there are tons, especially on our street who are just, you know, kind of playing in the street. So that would be kind of a fun way to bring everyone together um, and open up the forum a little bit, bring discussion. Okay, thank you. Others? Joey, Amalia? I mean, it, it goes back to you know, what I said, you know, originally, you know, I'm, we're the upper middle class Jewish family that just bought in Somerset, right? So with our, you know, little white boy and little white girl. And so, you know, clearly they're being brought up in a privileged setting and you want to make sure that they, they ex see other and it's been awesome. Well, everybody will eventually sees other, but, you know, accepts other is, 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 is the same as us. So uh, I don't know quite how to, I don't, I don't have an answer, right? I mean, I think I, I, what I know is I'm a progressive, I work for a progressive and, you know, I, I, I wanna teach my children to be accepting and, and tolerant and inviting of all. I'm not sure what the answer is. And I, again, I'm not, I don't, I haven't lived here enough to have any opinions on rezoning and multifamily units. Uh, I think at this point, I'm just, I think I just have a viewpoint on what, what I'm, what I'd like to see, see, you know, my kids raised as, I think it's sort of the, the flips, the flip side of the coin of what Sumi was just talking about, right? I, I've got the young white kids, right? Who, who, who are going to have one perspective and are never going to face what, what Sumi faced, even when she was driving on streets not far from here. But I want to make sure that my kids aren't perpetuating or are or, or part of a, the problem of what caused that. And in fact, are sort of the, I guess would say the counterpoint of, you know, accepting and tolerant of all. But beyond that, I, I don't have like a, a specific, um, uh, you know, tangible thing that I'm looking for. Um, this is just the thought, not really an idea, but um, kind of some of you were saying like 
um, teaching kids and stuff like that is I think there are a lot of people who already do that and that's really good and I think they're going to keep doing it but then there are also those people who don't unfortunately and that's going to be the challenge is how do we get them to and would they be able to right right so there's preaching to the choir and then those of you know those of us who feel like we are already receptive to it and you know learning more and more as opposed to people who are not open to it right now or maybe close to it and how do we peer them open um but uh uh robin when you were um talking about in the charter about um policy change recommendations and possibly i keep coming back to this because i think this is really the litmus test of all the awareness and the mindset and the wanting the diversity you know and i think the ultimate expression of that is really in whether we are willing to do things to accept different people um not just racially because here we are you know um there there is there, there are Asians in this community. There are quite a bit of South Asians, um, as I understand. Um, and so, I mean, there's racial uh, equity and inclusion, but there's economic equity and inclusion um, and how far. So what what did you have in mind, Robin, or did you have something in mind? In right. your own First of all, the, the mandate of the committee goes beyond racial differences it is it gender identity is also important socioeconomic right. is important too disability is and important. ability it's, ability it's disability. Broad, broad range of, mm -hmm. uh, of diversity that's that is, is part of the agenda um and it's not so much what i have in mind i mean it, it it's a framework that that there's a broad steerage for the committee is what that mission statement is but your ideas are going to what will move it be what will move it forward mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's really i'm interested in hearing where you are and what, what you're thinking about um i give a personal perspective just for myself to show, to show it's kind of the reverse side of the coin i am a first generation immigrant myself i, I was born in scotland and brought up in scotland um, i moved to this country and the moment the people knew i was from scotland how wonderful was the reaction roughly put i was immediately inside accepted i was a first generation immigrant i mean my re response to that was actually to minimize my scottishness to basically adapt to the culture and hide that because i felt that i was being privileged uh, because of my foreign background um, and that's just, as I said, a different perspective. Interesting. Um, you know, the, I, I feel like we there are these small things that that we can do, so we don't have to think about. I mean, it's a both and, I guess. You know, yeah. the, the policies and kind of the big. Well, they're definitely going to be harder things to even talk about. Mm -hmm. um in the community but then there are the kind of how do we go and identify those little micro damaging things that are happening every day and mm -hmm. joey i hope you don't mind but i'm going to share a story about your real estate <laughs> that you shared with me. right yeah. but uh and maybe but it it was i, I think you said you were going through Chevy Chase Village or something with your agent and they said, oh no, you're more of a Somerset kind of family. And, you know, I, like I could, I, I get it. Like, yes, like pe real estate agents say that, but there are real estate agents who work in this neighborhood all the time and, or, or you know, Chevy Chase. And could they be a little more, educated, could we go to those real estate companies and say, hey, knock it off, you know? Like, but it's this, actually illegal, right? Because it's against okay. fair housing. It, mm -hmm. it, it's against fair housing, except that it happens all the time. Yeah. And um, 
and we can say we've got our eyes on you you know please don't don't do that don't and whatever made them say that it was probably nothing in particular but that you're a progressive you know jewish family they may not even know you were jewish but but that you were a progressive jewish family you know chevy chase village has republicans in it you know kenwood they didn't let jews in it until a certain you know like so somerset great perfect you know there's a lot of progressive families there you're gonna love it um and that kind of steering happens in these little micro ways all the time i mean i mean i would say kind of the same thing is like we could go we could affirmatively go to real estate agents and say you know what our community is a great welcoming inclusive community and we would love for you to introduce our community to people maybe you don't always introduce our community to and please and, and like you know maybe when we have some data points about how we are inclusive we could sell our community in a way that might attract uh, a more diverse group of people to take but, but not Republicans. that's also okay. fair housing. <laughs> yeah, that's, you wouldn't be that's still fair housing because you can't attract a certain person to a community you couldn't say this is a diverse community because um that would violate fair housing law as well you you can go and educate um real estate agents to say and and say that you know we are a we are a community that you may not have looked at before but we are a wonderful community and that i don't think that violates we're not steering anybody in educating um real estate agents who don't necessarily always um think of us you know i was um, it's just it's also the price point right you can't there's only a certain amount of people in a certain amount of areas that people can live in right so um yeah because i'm a real estate agent so i wouldn't I don't know how you could say, I don't know how you could do that legally. It would be, it would be touching, yeah, on fair, on a lot of fair housing laws. It's just like, you know, the agent who said, oh, you're more Somerset then. Yeah, it's, it's, diff it's, mm -hmm. there's, yeah, there's lines, wiggly lines, but it, um, I don't know how you would do that in a policy without. I, I don't. I don't think I'm talking about policy. I'm talking just about like taking these baby steps to introduce ourselves in places that um, aren't always, you know, they don't always think of Somerset, you know, and just say. Anyway, I, I don't think it's like that big, but I'm just saying like there, there are things, you know. In, in I work. I. Uh, I work for grade school since you're a real estate agent, you probably know who I work. Um, and we do all the school ratings for across the country. And one of the things that we are talking about with real estate companies, uh, is how do you look at schools in different ways and not how do you steer people toward different schools? Cause that's against the fair housing act, but how do you look at schools in, um, from a, a different lens? How do you um, give information about schools? So Somerset School is a, num is a nine on great schools. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you, how do you help a, um, so a home buyer, you know, all the, I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm just looking at the clock. So, um, so I'm going to turn around here. I see this I'm going to mark this conversation, and I'm sorry I wasn't watching the clock uh, very carefully, but it's nine o'clock. Um, sorry, David. Did you want to say something? I, I, I wanted to say um, I, I, I think you know what Carrie and Leanne are talking about is really really interesting to me and really really important and these kinds of conversations i mean it's been a dream of mine for a while to get 
uh, together some real estate agents, including several who live in town uh, uh, or that that, uh, you know, sell homes in Somerset and ask them, uh, how come uh, is it that we don't have more African-American and Latinx families in Somerset? And what is your sense of what happens within real estate? And, you know, connected to, you know, connected to that, um, I, I also wanted to really ask Atsuko and, and Robin about this um, history um, mandate or non-mandate for our committee, because there's a long history of housing uh, segregation mm -hmm. in our area. And I think that th this is an example of a problem that I think ought to be understood within a historical context and not split between two committees and why is the history of uh, equity and inclusion being taken away from this committee and being given to another committee and does that other committee want it and you know because I, when i signed up for this committee i thought that was going to be part of this mm. well, the, i just got to jump in right here it is nine o'clock and my four-year-old is still awake. And so I'm gonna have to go address the situation. Okay. I hope to be back soon. Okay. I think for all of you who have children, you know exactly my problem. I was just dealing with the we'll nine year old for you. <laughs> but David, I think that that's one of these, this aspect of this committee is we can make recommendations to other committees about how to weave in the work of diversity and inclusion into their work. So if there is a committee that is tasked with kind of keeping the archives and the history of this town, it feels like we should- Sorry, can um, you know, has the dog please mute? It's me, so I can't mute and talk. <laughs> Bedtime and walk time. <laughs> okay, go on, sorry. Anyway, I think we could ask them to do that work for the town in, in collaboration with us maybe. Yeah, I don't think it's either or, and um, I'm not saying let's not do this. Um, so David, I appreciate that point because I think it is important to reference history to understand why we're here. Um, okay, but uh, it's, it is nine o'clock and I just wanna be mindful of the time. And as I'm listening to you, so there have been bits of like brainstorming ideas already that have come up, but I just want to really do a rapid brainstorming of ideas of what you think. Um, and this is kind of, you know, jumping ahead because I, I do want to have a very thoughtful conversation about what do we want to focus on for the for 2021 for the 10 months that we have, because I don't think we can do everything, obviously, uh, this year, um, but you know, um, where, where are the areas we can make the most impact? Um, and you know, what are, what is a long distance run? And then what are some sprints and what is, what is a race that we can finish this year? So, um, just want to have like a creative brainstorming about some ideas. And I know Sumi has really dedicated, um, her energy into the black lives matter or diversity library. You called it tonight. Um, which um, I, you know, I also wanted to make sure you weren't the sole um, person burdened with running that. Um, so I just want to go around the room to hear. And so far, I've heard conversations with real estate agents, possibly um, listening um, and awareness raising conversations, um, children's um, education. Uh, slash book club groups. Um, so anything at all that comes to mind, and then we can kind of dig deeper next time we meet to see if uh, any of these uh, would make sense in terms of the bang for the buck, if you will, um, in terms of our efforts versus the impact um, it could have. So again, there's no wrong initiative. If you wanna go around the room, I can call on you, um, Amalia. Um, this is not really an idea yet, but obviously COVID it's happening. And I think obviously there's lots of disadvantages to it, but maybe we could find almost some 
advantage to it in what work we do, whatever it be. Since I think it could possibly present an advantage in some way, what it is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But like Zoom, for example, that's a benefit. You can meet with people more easily. Yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely a gift and an opportunity, depending on how you look at it. Um, Leanne, I think um, that what uh, like Sumi said, if I think one of the big one of the small changes which will make a big impact is awareness and showing that um, you know we're a great community and you know the book clubs readings just small small things like that I think will make a big impact um, and can be easily easily achieved in the short term mm -hmm. and if I may jump in I I love the idea of book club but also for adults yeah and um Carrie I think while you were off video I mentioned that our daughters went to the same go to the same school and we had a great um, workshop on implicit bias, which if we could hold at Somerset would be great. So I have a story um, that's very different from Robin's. I'm from Japan. I'm a first generation immigrant. And whenever people find out that I'm from Japan, the question they say is, are your, you know, are your parents still there? You know, like, when are they going to come to the promised land? You know, where are your parents? Where's the rest of your family? I said, no, everybody's in Japan and they have no interest in moving here. And they're like, what? <laughs> you know, um, so it's interesting to hear the uh, different reactions that might be elicited. But um, yeah, there's so many there's so many gross and very subtle aggressions that take place every single day. And I, you know, I catch myself with my own biases and, um, you know, I mean, we all have room to grow. The question is how to include everybody, right? And then the bias that I have being, you know, progressive or liberal is that, you know, like on our block, we have uh, very conservative, pro-life, you know, Catholic, uh, Republican family. And I find myself having a hard time, you know, um, having, open dialogue, you know, and it's kind of a microcosm of what's happening out there, right? We're so divided. Um, so is there a way, you know, I mean, that's also closed minded, right? On my part to make certain assumptions, like, <laughs> so um, I think conversations, you know, David, Amalia, you are, you know, we look to you for your experience in facilitating these conversations, but I think it would be great. and. Like you said, Amalia, Zoom uh, affords an opportunity to bring perhaps speakers from you know other parts of the country, like I think you did with the Minnesota um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. community. That Black you... Women's Voices yeah. of Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. So yes, while we are confined to Zoom, we should definitely look for you know opportunities to capitalize on our current predicament. Um, Sumi, I know the books and the children are your passion. Do you have, um, yeah, I, you know, the talk that you mentioned, I think that would be a great idea that the zoom, I, I think zoom opens up a lot of potential to, you know, I mean, everyone can log on, they can skip it, you know, it's there. It's at least it's available. Um, and the more discussions that that can happen, I think that's, that would be so great to actually have. Um, some sort of, you know, led discussion for adults. Um, that's fantastic. Yeah, primarily my mm -hmm. focal point has been on the children, but I think that would be super helpful mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. You know, wh what about um, if there's some good children's books that end up in the diversity library to do some story times once in a while? That's the idea. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's exactly the idea. So um over Zoom. Oh yeah, even over Zoom. I mean, the only reason I was I was trying to stay away from Zoom is with the distance learning happening with the kids. You know, they're a little zoomed out. Mm -hmm. Um, but until the weather warms up, you know, I think that's probably the only option. And however it happens, it happens, you know. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. 
But I think, you know, the, the whole idea with the diversity library being in Founders Park with the benches and kids are always climbing the trees and kind of sitting about there over the summer. So it just seems a natural location. We also pondered the pool for the same reason, just because of the, the foot traffic, but anywhere where there's tons of exposure. And I've had, you know, many donations, a lot of children's books. So getting those in, I've been trying to just put in a few a week instead of putting everything in all at once um, because people are also sharing from their own, from their own personal libraries. But yeah, that's the idea, Carrie, exactly. So cool. It's to, to just kind of sit around and, and read a book or two. You know, the, the other thing we could ask the mayor, he's very active in the U.S. Conference of Mayors. And I, I would wonder if there are best practices from other municipalities similar to ours uh, that we can learn from, the, the um, bringing in voices from other places. Definitely. I think that was in the, I'm sorry to keep referring to the charter, but um, I think in the charter it says, let's learn from our town, our people, and then other other jurisdictions and their best practices or something like that. Also the Maryland Municipal League, which um, they actually do provide resources. They are an organization that provide resources so we can see from that um, what, what other communities in the state have done. Other ideas, David? So uh, I like the idea of the Maryland Municipal League and I'm wondering whether there is a town somewhere else in Maryland that would like to uh, join with us in some kind of um, dialogue uh, about um, conditions there, conditions here, uh, perspectives on equity and inclusion there, our perspectives on equity and inclusion here. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a reason? Is there a reason why you would want to just focus on Maryland and and or I'm just curious, like if you think there's a benefit to keeping it to Maryland or looking more broadly? I think you know it would be anywhere where we could have um, the potential for a relationship that might build and uh, last and deepen. So, I mean, I would be open uh, as far as that. It, it, yeah, and it does help if you're part of the same organization and some of that is a member of the Maryland Municipal League as is every other city in, in Maryland. So there is a connection that way. Other ideas? I just, it's, it's off topic probably, but um, where I lived in the UK, um, just about inclusion, but for the, um, the older generation and the younger generation, they had a little play group where the older generation would, they would meet and they would, I'm for British, right? So they would make tea and toast for the mums, but it was just a great way to get to know everybody in the community. And especially when some of the older people didn't, you know, have family around or were feeling lonely, it was a great way to sort of, um, yeah, get everybody to know each other and the very simple something, obviously, after COVID, hopefully. You know, just another little. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a beautiful idea. So we can just. I, I agree. I, I love that, Leanne. And it, it's reminding me of something, you know, when my kids were at Somerset Elementary, we had a, a diversity night mm -hmm. uh, every spring when the weather got nice and uh, families um, made tables to display their culture mm -hmm. and families brought foods and uh, Ruth Sorensen and Kathy Picard and I made a trio and welcomed uh, songs from all different countries and, and submissions of songs from different families and you know, tried to uh, cater to, to, to that. Um, so, you know, that could happen in in that school or uh, as a town uh, uh, event, you know, COVID permitting. Mm -hmm. now, I like that also because it kind of, the differences in age, you know, like Robin said, we're not talking just about differences in race, but 
mm-hmm. that bridging of the gap and um yeah it's, it's... there are also um there's also a great just history and knowledge uh, about the town so i live next door i live in ruth's house um next door to zola um mm. who zola schneiders who has these great stories about this town and um you know some of the the history i mean there's this great story about how um zola took took in um some of the black children who lived just outside of somerset in the little the neighborhood where, where the church is kind of by across from the 7-eleven um and um and and just was you know like i'm sure she could have something some something that she can share but the, the story i've heard is that um the children came to the school they didn't feel completely included they felt like they were others and she brought and part of it was because they came to school hungry sometimes or they came to school and they didn't have proper clothes or something and so she brought she took them into her home and um you know fed them before school so they had a good breakfast and so like i i feel like there are some stories that might help us understand this community a little better when it comes to um what the somerset story core yeah what was what somerset was like with regard to race and equity um and what the school was like you know and has been like over the years as well um, that's a big part of we, we haven't really discussed the school mm. it's a big okay. part of this so yeah there's a lot uh, more to dig in but i'm just mindful of time and um i wanted to make sure we left today with at least three decisions one was on the diversity library and that sumi is i think single-handedly doing right now um whether one of us can join her in supporting her um and i think the mayor wanted to the mayor sees the library as kind of like a low-hanging fruit that can be you know uh, I don't think, I mean, aside from the listserv, and I know not everybody is on the listserv, um, it hasn't been like really launched or advertised or, yeah. So, you know, maybe before Black uh, History Month is over, which is February, and we only have six more days, but I don't know what we can do, but is there, you know, a ribbon <laughs> um, cutting that we can do or, I don't know, some some somehow advertise it more broadly than the listserv. I don't know whether it's in the journal, the town journal or the newsletter. I believe it is in the town journal okay. um, or it was in January. Okay. Yeah. But I agree that that would have been nice. It would have been nice to have Naomi here as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I just don't think the library was ready in time. Mm -hmm. Maybe she could do a virtual reading. Yeah. yeah. A virtual, I, yeah, and, and maybe even a, she could attend virtually, you know, and I think that yeah, would be, she could, I, I just, the time difference, I think. Yes, yeah, would be challenging. Would in, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, but exactly, maybe use, utilize Zoom there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I think the books are, are, you know, it's manageable. It's not a time. I think the more emails that go out, the more awareness there is. Cause you know, people, I'm not, I certainly don't read the listserv every single day. So mm -hmm. I catch just bits and pieces. So I, you know, there's a lot of repeating, which is fine. And everyone's just saying, Oh, I didn't realize this existed and I have books. So it's, it's going well. I think more once the weather warms up and having some collaboration with, you know, getting events, scheduled and perhaps publicized would be a great way um that I mean, that okay. i would i would need some help with i think i mean there's a thought that i had really when you brought the idea on council is that if there's a committee behind you yes you can do it yourself but if problems and issues come up and you need a group to discuss it with then the committee is here to discuss it with yeah and that's that's the point yes definitely are you comfortable still continuing to take take the lead and move it forward sure and yeah it. and i think um, Robin, correct me if I'm wrong. The mayor said that we can make budgetary requests for 
the next fiscal year starting July 1st? Yes, right. And they are actually, they're due in, you know, the month of February, the one that ends in six days. <laughs> it's, it's that same time scale. Uh, so yes, you can do. And so if you, you know, you probably want to theoretically plan some kind of town event um, next year, which is, and that's the year that you're planning for. So it's to put yeah. something in the budget to, to, to secure that. I have no idea what kind of budgetary requests other committees are making, but like, I would love to request money for like a workshop with, yeah. but, um, you know. Uh, well, I mean, I could talk about it offline too, because okay. bearing in mind it's 20 past nine, but I, you know, it, it's the small thousands of dollars is roughly what you see from the other committees. Small thousands of dollars. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So Sumi, know that we're behind you and, um, as Robin suggested, if you need backup or, uh, but do you want to try to do something before the month is over? Um, in the next, how many days do we have? Six, six days. Through Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I think that that might be a little tight. Um, but I, you know, do you think March maybe would be great because the weather? Yeah might cooperate a little bit more and mm -hmm. I think just what traffic would be helpful. Although the books seem to be leaving. So Good. people are definitely <laughs> stopping by. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. See, how do you do it? Do you, uh, do people just leave books, take books, or do you have a kind of a stockpile? It's, it's, a, it's a combination of both. So when people are asking if they can donate, if it's diversity related, I ask them to drop it at my home and then I'll just put a Somerset BLM library diversity with the read it, love it, return it label um, that goes on the book. Now it's, it's a free library. It's out there. So people are free to put in whatever material that they would like, but I check it every other day, roughly, and just, you know, make sure there's nothing inappropriate. And if I need to make space for more diversity related material that has been donated. And also, uh, you know, we did purchase um, a set of books that have not all been placed yet. Those books, the ones that I remove, then I deliver to the mayor and he cur couriers them to other uh, little free libraries within the area, which he regularly does. So I think Chevy Chase, Town of Chevy Chase has one. We have another one right on, is it Warwick? Yeah, right on the street. Yeah, from yeah exactly. So the non-diversity related material is kind of getting shuffled about as we need to make space. But if there's space for it, I leave it in there. And I've been kind of putting in around, I think about three books a week that are new material. And those are- The difference between other free libraries as I, finally understood it is that it is really a library in the sense that you return the books as opposed to you drop off of anything, you pick up anything like the other free exactly. library. But the layer of complexity there is that there's no enforcement. There's no way to enforce it. It's just kind of basically honor code at this point. So, which is, it's fine. And the books are donated and neighbors are so, so generous. Um, so it, it's been, it's been working and I'm seeing books coming back too. So I think people are, are returning them. Okay. Yeah, I see the same ones kind of circulating about. And maybe wonder, we're running out of time, but um, so maybe it's too short a time frame to make this call, but um, I want you to think, and maybe some of you have thought about it. I do want um, to appoint somebody to take the lead on looking at this housing policy mm -hmm. issue that's, I think, on the table, right, um, Robin? Yeah, the, it's, it's happening now. I mean, it's happening. Yeah. Uh, Joe Wando CTA had a hearing last week, actually. Right, on the 13th. Um, and the Thrive Montgomery 2050, they're due in April uh, to report to uh, the County Council. So that's, that is moving along too. Mm -hmm. um, Leanne, I'm wondering, would you be interested in taking a look at this given your background? Yeah, yeah. I can, uh, yeah. I've looked at briefly. I mean, I'm, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it'll be interesting to see where that lies and with the planning permission within the council, within t the town of Somerset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I could fill you in on what the, the town council's done. Um, unknowingly, the, the planning officers who's uh, drafting the Thrive and Company, they put out a first draft, which was 160 pages long. Um, 
and then they've now completely revamped it and they have not shared what they've completely revamped yet, which not even with the county executive who was very annoyed at them. So we're waiting for their latest draft and it's not yet out. Okay. So is everybody okay with Leanne taking a lead on this? I mean, how do we make decisions like this, Robin? Do we vote or? We, we're supposed to do things, things by vote, you know, I mean, it, it's, uh, it, as there isn't, isn't, Leanne is the volunteer and there's nobody else, it was a very simple, straightforward vote, yeah. <laughs> well, I kind of suggested it, but I can't see Joey, um, Amalia, Sumi, Carrie, David. Hmm? All in favor, you know, that's what you do, except I'm not voting, all right. Okay. There we go. Okay, so um, but please, maybe, please do share, good. Leanne, because I'm also quite interested in it, and I'll okay, work David, with you as you right. need uh, any assistance. Mm -hmm. Okay, Leanne and David, Perfect. and anybody else. Um, we don't have to decide now, but the two of you. So far, okay, and then um, okay. So we have four more minutes, and I know uh, we are supposed to meet at least. Uh, six times during, so we have a 24 month term and within every 12 month uh, period, we're supposed to meet six times. So roughly every two months, but I'm wondering if we could meet a little bit sooner than two months out because I want to, you know, start um, getting things uh, into action. Mm -hmm. So um, are there nights that people cannot meet? I know Amalia made a special arrangement you usually have a commitment on monday night so thank you for being here amalia um so monday night is out from now on but does it does anybody else have any i can't do wednesdays but i can't do thursdays <laughs> <laughs> so tuesdays so tuesdays <laughs> okay tuesdays um so, <laughs> um could we meet um in like I don't know how soon you have the appetite to meet, but I'd really like to kind of hone in on um, just a calendar and a timetable of things and, you know, how are we going to divvy up what and um, what progress we'd like to make by, say, end of the year, not end of the fiscal year, but the calendar year. Yeah. I would agree, Atsuko, and, and my perspective on the calendar is that um, we can do things in the spring and people have been talking about the weather during April, May and June. And then after July 4th, during July and August, there are often vacations that take many folks away and having, mm -hmm. having events uh, are less attended unless they're really summer oriented events. So that, that, you know, that's very possible for us as well, but it's a bit different in the summer. And then things are kind of busy in the fall. So each season kind of has its own character. And it might be good to think about the different seasons and what would be appropriate activities for different seasons uh, and think about that um, sooner within the next month. Okay. Um, how is March 16th? Tuesday, March 16th. And would you rather uh, meet earlier, like 7.30 or even... I'm, I'm mindful about family dinner time, so. For me, this is good because of uh, my kids are in bed. <laughs> but that's. Is Tuesday, March 16th good for everybody? Good. Okay. Um, so I want to read a few things on the chat. Um, so I sent around the article that I think Carrie was referring to. I didn't even know about the Dolphins article in The Economist. Um, so I sent the link and then um, Amalia sent an article about segregation in California neighborhoods. Um, David said to everybody, Sumi, should we make a budget request to finding more books, buying to fund buying more books? Um, and Carrie said, could we create a virtual DEI resource library with articles, TED Talks, et cetera? Carrie, do you want to take that on? Um, because uh, now, like, you've got already two articles, and then you have a TED Talk. I just talk. put a TED Talk in there that somebody sent me recently that was pretty good. Okay. Um, 
yeah, well, yes, I guess, um, Matthew, I guess I'm gonna ask you, is that something that can be hosted on the town website? Um, I have to be honest with you, I'm not even, I don't know exactly um, how that would work, but I could certainly help you find the resources to try to make that happen. What, what jumps to mind is we are um, part of, we, we're actually a, me a member town for um, one of the local public access channels. And so they could probably set something up for us um, to do a, a YouTube live event, um, some, something along those lines. We can we can take this further. Um, that was not part of the agenda, but it just struck me. Um, so th let's think about that. Um, so the um, I think Carrie said something earlier about like the story cores with like interviewing the old people that might fit in. And also what you could do is have like younger people interview the old people. I talked to this um, elderly lady on my street. She has lived here for over 60 years. She very, very interesting person. Rose Harris. Um, yep, the one and only. Um, and I did one recently with my grandma and it was just so eye-opening, just like similarities, differences. Um, I guess you could even add it into how you're talking about like the virtual, like little library. You could maybe ask them to take video clips, put them in there. I, I would also say if if somebody wanted to do some, I'm I'm, positive that that's something that the communications committee would also be interested at in as a a journal piece if somebody were to do you know to to um do some type of interview like this, especially you know a cross-generational interview like that wow. um, i think okay. that's a now wonderful idea <laughs> and, and, and i should on that point say the journal is looking for articles like crazy so even at Scott just we, we are the equity and inclusion committee here we are you know and we, we we're meeting regularly even something like that in the town journal will be welcomed okay so we just brainstormed a bunch of great ideas uh which i've noted but um in terms of decisions so i just want to conclude in that sumi will continue to take the lead on the library um, maybe come up with a budgetary request so that needs to take place very quickly maybe by the end of the week um, and I'll also so anybody if you're thinking even though it's in the you know embryonic stage if you have a project let's make a budget request so just please send them to me um, whether it's story core a video whatever if, if there's any budgetary implications in the small thousands um, and then Leanne and David um, taking the lead on looking into this housing proposal and uh, what what it might mean for Somerset, what we might recommend for Somerset, what we might have to discuss as Somerset. Um, and then we meet uh, next on Tuesday, March 16th at 8 p.m. And we will meet a little bit more intensively in the beginning to get things rolling. And I suggest that we take um a break, um, maybe July and August when everybody, well, COVID permitting um, disperses for the summer, although Zoom makes it possible for us to meet. Um, so I think we call that a meeting. Um, anybody have any questions, comments? Well, yeah. I just put in the chat that there's still 600 remaining so for book purchases, haven't had to use much of it because there have been so many donations. Oh, wow. Yeah. So people just wrote checks to you? Oh, no, they just drop off books. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. And then also there was an original donation from the little free library. Um, so I think that that was a set of 20 books. Yeah. I bet, yeah, I bet if you ask in the listserv again, you know, for all of us during COVID to look in our libraries. Yeah, their books a good idea. Out. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to leave with one observation from yesterday's meeting. I said that it was the um, town of Chevy Chase's group, and one one member of their equivalent committee, the Racial Justice Committee, said, "Why why is it that 
wealthy African Americans are not living in the town of Chevy Chase. And he pointed out that he knew a partner in a major law firm who is African American and very wealthy and who lives in Silver Spring. Um, and um, another member of the committee very politely and carefully pointed out that this individual would not feel at home in the town of Chevy Chase. And that's actually what he himself reported. And that's another aspect of our lack of diversity too. Yeah, I spoke to um, a young couple last week who want to live in Silver Spring. They're white, but they want to live in Silver Spring because of the diversity. Mm. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's something that's probably going to keep happening because millennials are more diverse than um, you know any generation. And I read somewhere that m children of millennials are more than 50% um, children children of color mm -hmm. so you know it's going to be hard to want to move into a town where you don't see other people like you and you know i'll bring it back to the school for a second too like or to go to a school where there are no teachers of color Absolutely. you know um even if there's some diversity at the school there's no there are no from what i understand and i don't i don't have a child there but there are no teachers of color. That's I went there. I there were some. Yeah, I and I just not sure there is there are right now, but but there might be. There might be. I, I that's what I've heard, but I, I haven't fact checked that. Yeah. Yeah, so many things to consider. Like I so when I was this is in the late sixties, when I was seven, my parents, my father was assigned to his New York office. And, you know, we could have lived in a Japanese ghetto. There were like Fort Lee and Larchmont, New York. But my parents, you know, like went out of their way to move into an all white town. And that was, that was really, you know, they really wanted us kids to have the American experience, but it was really hard. You know, I had stones thrown at me and I mean, it was a great experience, but I think it's so hard to be the first mover. And now, you know, 50 years later, apparently that town is like, you know, like almost half Asian, but we were the first movers and the first movers, you know, like what black family would want to move into Chevy Chase to experience that, even though they're probably going to pave the way for more and more, right? Um, and how could we make, you know, and Sumi, you had this horrible experience as we, you know, in 20, the 21st century, right? Yeah. So, um, so their mindsets and so we're not even talking about microaggressions, right? It's, there's a band of prejudice. Yeah. yeah. So how could, you know, so it goes back to Carrie, what you were saying, like, how can we, well, there's a price, you know, price barrier, but once like Robin, was it Robin who said, even those who can afford to live here might not want to live here. And how can we change that? Right. Right. So lots of work to be done. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're all here and, um, Sorry for running over time, but um, yeah, lots to dig deep about. Um, anybody, any final thoughts? So Kumar is saying something. Town could use the website to attract more diverse residents. Uh. <laughs> 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 we have pictures of wildlife. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Thank you, Kumar. Mm. Thank you for Good that. Point. Yeah, that's that's something we can talk to the communications committee about too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. and that's, these are the small steps that will make a big impact, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah okay so let's keep talking i don't know whether you have appetite to continue the conversation between meetings and amalia i think your generation i don't know do you talk through slack or... yeah i've used it before <laughs> well we can figure that out i um as a facilitator i'm like a stickler for time but if it doesn't bother you we can keep talking but i i'm i'm aware that we're well over our time i don't know how other committee members um conduct themselves Robin, so I don't know whether this was a typical well, I can say is they're all different. <laughs> you know? um, the the uh, some of the meetings will go two hours easily; others are finished crisply in an hour. Is kind of basically what okay. comes down. Okay. Well, we can call the official part of this meeting over, Matt. <laughs> Thank you for hosting. And so you want to recording um, what you're saying. Yeah, so. I, I have one response. What I was hearing you say, Atsuko, or ask was, uh, how do we feel about communication between meetings? And I'm not mm -hmm. familiar with Slack, but I'd be open to learning it. Or if we have an email list among us and do that um, method in, in any way that feels comfortable to people, I would. Uh, be happy to, you know, continue the uh, exchanges and conversations because I, I think there's so much and we've just opened it and it's very exciting yeah. to me. The only yeah. thing that I will add is um, because it's an official body of the uh, of the town government, there are mm -hmm. certain rules, uh, sunshine rules that require open meetings and announcements of meetings. And so um, any sort of extracurricular uh, communications would, there, there are certain rules about what could or could not be discussed by the committee members um, off, offline, so to speak. Um, so uh, that, that's a very neb nebulous uh, nebulous thing to say, and I understand that um, the law itself is sort of nebulous, but um, just wanted to sort of mention that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it sort of try to give more guidance there, Matt. The, the, one of the criteria is that you, when discussing it among the committee, to make sure it's with all of the committee so that there are no cliques forming in the committee is, is, okay. is very important. Um, and that's, that, that's it. And you make no decisions um, by email um, or in a closed committee. All decisions are made in the open committee meeting. That's the other important thing. Okay. okay. Thanks, Robin. Thank you. Then maybe we should just use the group um, email address that Matt you created for us, which everybody's listed on. Yes. I I believe so. I think I heard back from. I think everybody had uh, emailed back to say that they had received it. Um, please let me know if that's not the case. Okay. Okay. Well, so Matt, does that mean that when anyone sends a message to that email address, it goes to all members of our committee? That's right. The way I set it up um, is that that email address will forward to all of your individual email addresses. And part of the reason I, I do that is because if for some reason there was a public information act request, which is sort of the, the local government version of FOIA that they could say, I want to see all of the communications of the equity and inclusion committee. And then I could just download uh, everything that went to that email instead of having to go to your individual emails that and it's also just an easy way to communicate to all of you all at once okay you know there's one thing we didn't bring up and just like a small thing but um just kind of visible signs at that as a community well besides the library is definitely one of them but um i think can't remember if we put Black Lives Matter sign on the town hall lawn. 
yes there there is a black lives matter sign um uh in at the, uh, in front of the front entrance to the to the town hall oh, okay got it okay that's another brainstorming idea so keep them coming because i was thinking maybe we can make our own somerset banner you know like um, i love amalia's um, organization called no place for hate or you know some some campaign um with the town of somerset you know where households that choose to you know hang it in front of their house can or i don't know um something to think about or all are welcome here um but to be continued um i'm so glad that you're all here thank you um robin for being our council liaison and it's exciting that so many of us are immigrants. It's exciting that we have brand new residents as well as longtime residents. Um, so historical perspective and yeah. Um, so I think we should call it uh, a meeting unless uh, you want to stay and Matt, you can stop recording. <laughs> Okay, I'll consider this meeting adjourned. Mm -hmm. Adjourned. Okay. Thank you, lots, 